Hello, my name is Dante Renee, and welcome to the Ten Room Bizarro YouTube page, where I talk about films that I believe need to be talked about more. Like tonight's film, 1985's Horror House on Highway 5. This is put out by Vinegar Syndrome, and the original release of this um, was put out on a very bare-bones DVD that looked like it was a VHS-type rip. Um, dark and murky at times, some things you couldn't uh, really kind of figure out, and had that about 10 years ago, and then Vinegar Syndrome goes and does this on Blu-ray and DVD. This is Horror House on Highway 5, 1985. Um, there's, uh, there's reversible cover art in here as well. Um, this is a film that I heard about. It was referred to me on Amazon about, like I said, 10 years ago. And it had some very interesting reviews on Amazon at the time, and I said, this sounds right up my alley. When Vinegar Syndrome put this out, um, you know, beautifully and with uh, commentary from the director and everything else, I said, I have to get this because the movie mystified me years ago, and it still mystifies me today. Let's get into 1985's Horror House on Highway 5. I have some notes right above me here, so you'll see my eyes divert at times, but we have essentially here a Nazi legend involving a rocket Three students, a local neighborhood, a mysterious red door, two brothers, tarot cards, black magic, a Richard Nixon mask, LSD, maggots of the brain, and it all takes place in one night. This is such a unique, interesting movie. Um, there's really no horror movie like this that I've seen. It operates as an 80s film that could have been made in the psychedelic 70s. And I don't want to say psychedelic loosely, though. What I mean by psychedelic is boundaryless, um, experimental, avant-garde, um, no boundaries of logic, no boundaries of what dialogue or editing or cinematography should be, what characters should be. Again, what dialogue or conversations should be okay that all goes out the window here and then we are we are operating in a very free world in this horror film and this is a this even expands the boundaries of horror and it expands the boundaries of exploitation and underground cinema what a unique world this is um we have shots at off-kilter angles in this movie. Uh, below, from the ground up and above, corners of a room, and even a shot under a glass table. Uh, so, so incredibly unique. Um, a red lit hallway, okay? Um, nonchalant reactions of characters and intelligently surreal dialogue and actions you know that those nonchalant reactions from actors is key here folks um, because you're getting reactions and like I said you're getting conversations from characters that you are not expecting and that you don't normally see in a film dark lighting we have editing it the editing is like operating in another world the scenes move together like they're from some alien planet uh, there are very scary shots in this film as well. Tense uh, uh, kind of shots of terror in this film. Um, there's almost like a, it's almost a hallucinating 80s slasher Nazi mashup. The whole movie feels like the director and everyone in it are either using LSD or are aliens. Uh, none of the typical 80s horror rules apply to this film. And I say all of this positively, of course. This is a very, there's a very low budget vibe to this film, but it's very artistic and very late night type of vibe. If you like those, those movies that have a late night type of vibe, those horror films, this is it. Why are things happening? It defies the logic of cinema. It defies the logic of movies itself. Now, you know, something that's really, really interesting in this film as well is the music. There is wall to wall music in Horror House on Highway 5. And... What makes it even better is that the music is amazing. The music is diverse. The music is great. You want a soundtrack for this music. Where is the soundtrack to Horror House on Highway 5? Please. Now, there's a music video uh, as part of this uh, this Blu-ray DVD set um, that was directed by the, the uh, 
the director and supposedly was the impetus for this film. Um, wall to wall, unreal amounts of music in this film. Uh, the, the music is just as surreal and bizarre as the scenes and characters and story. The music is abrasively edited, moving from one song to another and sometimes just playing a few seconds of one song. It represents all the different feelings of the movie. Dark, horror, atonal, oppressive, orchestrated horror, dark night atmosphere, 50s music. Um, even post-punk rock with lyrics reflecting the film, you know, maybe bands just for the film. Strings and synth music. And yes, there's even weird-ass dancing in this film. You know, a lot of people mention um, Friday the 13th, I believe it's part four, where Crispin Glover is doing a very weird dance. I gotta tell you, this movie... This, this movie's right up there with some unbelievably surreal dancing. Um... And probably more so. Definitely more so because of the whole context of this film. Um, we have some really, really great, I mean, I, I want to call it kind of, um, uh, you know, post-punk rock music in this film. That it, it has a real um, guitar, electric guitar driven vibe and a and, and little bit, maybe a little bit early gothy sounding. Just great, great music. Um, even in the menu screen, you'll get to hear some cues that are just really satisfying and and uh just pull you into this world um real locations uh were filmed in this movie i mean it really it, you know i don't see sets in this film i mean very low budget to begin with but you know real locations in california real homes uh real darkness outside um you know we have we have blood in this movie we have wounds in this movie we have some gore in this movie and Almost like a violent snuff type vibe at times, uh, yet nightmare vibes also. And there's also an element to the violence and to everything else in the film um, that has a an overblown surreal quality to it too so while sometimes you know things are <clears throat> are ultra you know, can feel ultra you know, real with the violence we're also operating in another world where things are very outrageous very um very intensified and exaggerated uh from the characters the dialogue to the situations and so it makes the violence also uh, slightly surreal as well. Uh, we do have nudity in the film, a, a, a topless and some butt um, near the beginning of the film um, and uh, with a shower scene. And when you're inside of the homes in this movie, it really has a vibe that you're inside somebody's house. Not that it's a movie. It feels like, you know, documentary a bit at times. And uh, it, it kind of, it has a beautiful low budget vibe um, that you would even get in 80s uh, adult films and things like that. Just that, you know, I'm inside of a real location. Um, and the girl in the film who's only really mentioned as Gina in the credits, um, she's... Uh, She's my favorite. Uh, you know, I just find her attractive and she just has a great vibe about her. I wish I knew more about her. And there's a really awesome twist ending uh, to the movie as well um, that, uh, <clears throat> you know, kind of takes you for a loop and, and with some really off-kilter weird dialogue as well. This is 1985's Horror House on Highway 5. I guarantee you, you have never seen anything like it before. You can get this directly from Vinegar Syndrome site, or you can get it through Diabolic DVD, which is where I get most of my stuff. And on Diabolic DVD, it tends to be uh, a bit cheaper, uh, a couple dollars, especially what I'm learning is, is that on DiabolicDVD.com, the Blu-rays uh, from Vinegar Syndrome tend to be cheaper than the DVDs from Vinegar Syndrome. Uh, for the DVDs, maybe go to Vinegar Syndrome to get that, or Amazon. So, there you go, folks. 1985's Horror House on Highway 5. Thank you so much for watching the 10 Room Bazaar YouTube page where I talk about films that I believe need to be talked about more like this one. Um, please feel free to check out all my other reviews in this YouTube page, as well as my own personal films at youtube.com slash poopy diarrhea. Thank you, and good night.